Welcome back to the channel guys. I get asked quite a lot what are my NVIDIA control panel settings and what are my settings in general when running my RTX 5090 so I thought I'd decide to do a video to actually show you. I tell a lot of people I basically just run default and that is true there's only one thing I change and that is the um, performance from the power management section so if you go to power management you have the choice between normal or maximum performance. Because I overclock my GPU, I just use maximum performance. All that really does is allow your GPU to run at its full clocks wherever possible, even on the light load. And that is it. Everything else is completely default. So there's not real changes that I make. I don't think you should really make any changes to your um, NVIDIA control panel if you're doing benchmarking and things like that, because it can screw results. You can literally tweak it to reduce your anti-aliasing. You can tweak it to reduce texture quality and stuff like that. But that's not going to be a representation of what the card will perform at default. You may be able to save a few FPS here and there, but that's not how the card generally operates. When it comes to my resolution, obviously that's something you would have to choose for your own monitor, but I play at 3840 by 2160 at 120 hertz, using 10-bit RGB at full. And you can either have using on or off. I sometimes have it off because it can take away a few points from some benchmarks, but generally I have it on. And that is pretty much it. I don't have any other adjustments on my NVIDIA control panel. Now, when it comes to my actual RTX 5090 itself, I'm using the ASUS Tough OC edition. So it comes factory overclock. Um, so at stock, it's not a massive boost over the general um, normal version, but it, I think it's like maybe 30 to 50 megahertz or something like that. They never overclock the RAM, so that's always at normal. So I'm just going to show you the settings I'm using. So what you want to do is hold control and press F. That will bring up your voltage frequency curve editor. So on this axis, going horizontal, you have your voltage points. And the axis going vertical is your core clock speed. Now, what I like to do, I know my my uh, card at stock will use up to 1.07 volts. And you really don't need that much, so you can actually shave a bit off. So you can do a slight undervolt and pretty much get a decent overclock at the same time. Because these cards are power limited at 600 watt, there are times you'll find yourself your core clock backing off just to maintain within that 600 watt envelope. So if you can get away with saving a few volts, you can actually maintain a higher core clock, which will result in having better results in power um, power limited scenarios. So I choose one zero two five volts. So what I do is I hold shift and I highlight from one zero two five volts all the way to the left to the end. And now when I move the one zero two five volt, it will move every single voltage point that's highlighted. So it just saves you time. Previously, I've done it individually, but a lot of you kindly pointed out you don't need to do that. I've taken that on board. I know my card is okay to boost up to um threaded well three point two gigahertz point five, so three two five zero megahertz. And all I do is hit accept or the tick what you'll find is it will bring everything in line but just to make sure this voltage point doesn't exceed 1025 what you want to do is double click so you get rid of all the highlighted area and you want to highlight everything past 1025 the selected voltage point and then you want to drag it down and hit the tick again hit accept and what you'll find, you see that voltage point now curves up right above 1025. So it basically locks the voltage or caps the voltage at that voltage. So it can't use any more than that. And that's all it is really um, for the core clock. For my memory clock, I generally used to use 3000, which is the maximum. What I found is I can maintain a higher core clock just by using 2600. And there's barely any difference as well in performance unless you're running a very very sensitive benchmark like um, port royale that loves memory speed 
other than that, you won't really see too much of a difference. And that is it. That's generally my overclock that I run pretty much in every video. And it's rock solid in whatever game I want to run it in. So I'll just do a stock versus overclock comparison. You guys can see if this makes any difference to performance. And I'll leave you guys to check out the results. So you can see with the comparison, I was getting around 10 FPS plus on average, and that was using less power than stock and producing the same amount of heat or just a little bit less. So there isn't really any downsides. I'm just going to play a little bit of Cyberpunk as well. Just to show you guys the clocks and the power draw and the voltage. So playing at a resolution of 3840 by 2160. 
playing with DLSS transformer model at the balance preset with DLSS ray, con ray reconstruction with path tracing. Uh, crowd density at high, 90 field of view. No depth of field vignette. Chromatic aberration or film grain. I like a nice clean image, just a personal choice for me. Everything else though is completely maxed out. So one of my favorite games, Cyberpunk, uses path tracing, uses other parts of the GPU. I try to um, play games that draw the most power and path tracing games are definitely up there. Games like this and Alan Wake 2. Um, any other game that uses a lot of ray tracing would also do a similar job. Just so you can kind of see what clocks you're getting. You can see right now I'm still using under one volt, so 0 0.99. 0.995 volts, whereas my stock voltage would be 1.050 or, or more. And that in turn produces more heat and gets you to be power limited a lot quicker than running under one volt. So it's a very, very minute under volt, but it's still effective. Now, if you talk about the 10 FPS I gained on average, you may feel that's not a great deal of performance. and Maybe it's not worth the trouble, but you can look at examples like the 4080 Super and RTX 4080. There were there weren't 10 FPS difference between those two cards, and you can do this, and it costs nothing. It's another mission, but I'm not going to do that right now. See, just drawing under 600 watts. So this is a game you can be power limited at, at these settings, but I'm not at the moment. So holding over three gigahertz pretty comfortably. And that's not a very easy thing to do with this game. Which way do I go? Is it this way? No, I was meant to go over the overpass. Let's find, we'll find another way. Oh. You gotta keep your eyes on the road. This is definitely the poster child for Nvidia when it comes to RTX features. I don't know any other game that's got a bigger push for RTX features than this game. And if I was CD Projekt Red, I'd be uh, I'd be trying to get some money out of Nvidia for that. Sounds like there's some trouble nearby, but maybe I shouldn't get involved. game looks absolutely amazing since it's been updated and path tracing was it used to be rtx override or overdrive who's this now hey v frank here arasaka remember hey yeah sure damn you old bastard it's been a while since listen to the whole message please abernathy's purging the death Anybody not 100% with her is out. I'm on her list. No idea why. You know how it is. No prisoners, no dismissals. Not about to sit around, wait for the execution. I'm putting together a file. Fuck up her life. Got all the documents in a... a hidey hole. If I don't manage to make use of them, you'll get this message. And the cords. I know you'll know what to do with them. Fuck. Damn, guess he never made it. I don't really remember that mission too well. But that's definitely one I'll be checking out a bit later. The LSS has come a long way in this game as well. I remember when it first came out. When you're in this elevator, all the techs were a bit messed up. It was all skewed. Now we're on transformer model DLSS4. Everything looks as it should. Yeah, 
has been listed at 700,000 euro dollars per month. For the second consecutive week, the landfill inferno in the remnants of Atlantic City continues to rage around. Enjoying the weather? Average temperatures this month in Night City have remained within human space off of post collapsing contracts. Pan Am, hey. Hello, V. Oh, I'm starting to feel that stress go away. That's so. Come here. Oh, stop. How's it going? Depends on what the it is. And what you want to hear. Oh, you know, the huge. I longed for you, V. Oh, I see you've already played out this conversation all on your own. Force of habit. Pan Am. <laughs> I did, though. I missed you. Let's talk a little while longer before I have to Delta somewhere. You have no idea how much I needed that. So anyway guys, that's pretty much it for me. Just wanted to show you guys the settings I use pretty much for all my videos now. So I keep getting asked and uh, hopefully that answers that question. The city of dreams. I'd gladly kick the balls off the idiot who thought that one up. Anyway guys, that's pretty much it for me. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks for watching.